So to begin with, I would like to thank the organizers to have accepted the following communication. Uh, the present topic is particularly meaningful for me because I have approached it since my master's degree, working on early medieval glass from the Eastern France and I currently finished thesis on glass from the 8th to 11th century in France, studying both typological and archaeometrical aspects of this material. This presentation will deal with phenomena prior to the abandonment of natron as flux and the collapse of the centralized production model of antiquity. During the last two decades, uh, advances in the chemical analysis of archaeological glasses have established an increase in recycling in Western Europe prior to the adoption of plant or wood ash as alkalis at the end of the 8th or in the 9th century. However, archaeological and archaeometric <coughs> data have also demonstrated that raw glass was still used during this period to produce vessels and stained glass windows. This raw glass was produced into, uh, into main, two main regions during the antiquity, the Levant and Egypt. I will focus my communication on only on Levantine glass, sorry, occurrences in France. Um, the material considered here comes from 10 sites. The glass samples are dated from mid 7th century and the mid 9th century. I would like to point out that this corpus is not representative at all because it is not the result of a systematic approach of early medieval glass in France. We cannot analyze all the glass remains found in, on the territory for several pract practical reasons that you can easily imagine. The data must result of opportunities to access to the archaeological material <coughs> and interests of the context. So the number and the distribution of the sites do not reflect any reality except the state of research. Among the 10 sites, there are two domestic occupations. Nordheim in Alsace is a rural settlement mostly based on agricultural and domestic activities like weaving. Only nine fragments of glass have been found in early medieval contexts. The second site is characterized by the urban occupation in the city center of Marseille, close to the Herbeau. Among several late antique vessel glasses, a blue-green pan cup with twisted ribs belongs to the late Levantine glass group. Three sites uh, are more characterized by the religious occupation represented by a church or monastery. Even the domestic or funeral structures have also been recognized on these sites. The glass material studied here comes from religious buildings. That is the case of the uh, funeral church of Luxeuil, a Columbanus foundation, at the one built and the one built at the top of a fortified settlement close to Salin les Bains in the Jura Mountains. On both of them, stained glass windows have been discovered in late Merovingian, early Carolingian contexts. The last site also gives up several lamps and vessel glass with a probable liturgical function. Sorry. Um, the third religious site is an early mon medieval monastery founded at the top of an hill in the Vosges Mountains. So it's the Saint-Mont. For more than 1,000 glass shards are associated to the first occupation dated from uh, late 7th to early 9th century. Stained glass windows, vessel glass, and lamps show a great diversity of colors, ornaments, and shapes. Among them, we find characteristic glass with reticular words that uh, you know. Five glass workshops complete our list. The oldest is Magellan's one on the Mediterranean, pardon, sorry, Mediterranean littoral, attributed to the 6th, 7th centuries. Only one shirt shows all the characteristics of the late Levantine glass. In Bordeaux, the excavations of the Camille Julian Square revealed several raw glass chunks and shards of crucibles. 
but in secondary position. One of the chunks comes from the Levantine coast. Another raw glass chunk and workshop waste have been fortuitously discovered around the famous Abbey of Jumiège. The archaeological material is too poor to identify the production, but two stained glass windows and small um, pieces of vessel glass complete the batch. The glass workshop of Amage shows the same configuration. Different modules of crucibles and glass nodules have been discovered <coughs> in a large trash level between the church and the living building of the nuns. In this case, the production of reticella glass has been demonstrated by both analysis and typological data. Evidence of glass workshop has also been found in salin les bains and Luxeuil that I already presented, but there is no proof that Levantine glass well, has been locally remelted, uh, contrary to the, the, these workshops of uh, Jumiège and Amage. The last site represents a different type of workshop, not directly connected to a religious environment. In Meru, in the north uh, part of France, the craft structures are implanted along a river and close to essential resources like clay, wood and sand. Two main glass groups have been identified. The first one is a soda mineral glass, made according to the antique receipt. And the second one is a mixed alkali glass, resulting of a mix between natron glass and wood ash glass. Levantine glass was identified among the culettes, so the recycled glass. The ceramic material allows us to date the workshop into um, the two first thirds of the 9th century. The glass samples have been analyzed by ICPMS. This method allows us to determine almost all the major mineral and traces elements of the glass. With the laser ablation, we can also control and choose uh, to analyze a specific part of the sample, like the ornament or the body of bezel glass. Let me now present you the results. Uh, I won't detail the first steps of the classification, which consists to separate the glass samples according to their flux, and then to identify relative pure glass among natural glass to the re recycled ones according <laughs> copper, antimony, lead, and stain oxides amount. This graph shows you that we can easily make the difference between the two main origins of raw glass in late antiquity and early Middle Ages. The titanium and zirconium amounts of the Levantine glass are low compared to the Egyptian one. In the current state of uh, my research, I did not identify light Egy late Egyptian glass in France among the stained glass windows and the glassware. Following the classification proposed by Febs and Ali uh, in 2016, the glass identified as uncontaminated by recycling turns out to come from the Eastern Mediterranean coast. The late Levantine glass is mainly and easily identifiable by the lake of manganese, contrary to the raw glass produced during antiquity in the same region. That's why it, its presence above 500 ppm could significate that it's not natural and that a few proportion of culettes could have been remelted. So we propose to applicate to more strictly selecting, excluding the samples with more than 500 ppm of manganese. Focusing on this new selection, we can compare the French samples to the two known late primary glass workshops of Bette Eliezer and Apollonia. Both of them are located on the Levantine coast in the actual state of Israel. It's interesting to notify that most of the samples dated between the mid 7th and the mid 9th century belong to the Apollonia group, while this primary glass workshop is attributed to the 6th, 7th centuries. It concerns the raw glass chunks of Jumiège and Bordeaux, the glass waste of Jumiège and Amage, and most of the vessel glass and stained glass windows found on the other sites. Only one sample 
a stained glass window from Amage in north, uh, north of France is similar to the Bet Eliezer primary production. Two other ones from the same set could belong to the same group, but they are on the intersection of the two groups, so it's an hypothesis. <coughs> so, how to interpret these results? How, at the end of the Merovingian period and the beginning of the Carolingian one, before the transition toward wood ash glass, chemical analysis have demonstrated that pristine Levantine glass is still worked and remelted in French secondary glass workshops to produce stained glass windows and vessel glass. But the main observation is that most of this Levantine glass seems to come from the primary glass workshop of Apollonia. A difference of one or two centuries thus appears between the primary production and the secondary one. So we propose two explanations. The first, um, there is actually a long interval between the primary production in the Levant and the use of the glass chunks in France, which could be explained by a recycling of older stocks of old glass. Um, secondly, most of the Levantine glass discovered in France shows similarities with the Apollonia group, but it could come from primary glass workshops still unidentified by archaeology in the same area of known one and which use the same primary resources like sand. Only an increase of chemical analysis and new archaeological discoveries could confirm one of these proposals. In any case, we can make a last observation on the use of this pristine glass. It doesn't seem to be reserved to a specific production. Furthermore, the glass growers did not seem to give importance to this resource because they did not hesitate to mix it with recycled glass. So Levantine glass was probably not a precious resource during the 7th, 9th centuries, even though it was less common than recycled glass and culette. Thank you for your attention.